What's up everyone, Alex here. Before anything else, I just want to say one thing. Unicorn Overlord. So this is a big deal to me because not only is it Vanillaware's latest title, but in my upcoming games video for March 2024, I had a difficult time pronouncing the name of this game for some reason. Until McBill7352 actually said that, you know what, in the UK we pronounce it as Lord, not Lord, because that kind of makes it a little bit difficult to pronounce as well. So here I am, I'm going to pronounce Unicorn Overload the way that it is that I'm doing right now. Vanillaware is actually one of my favorite Japanese developers of all time, and they combine this obsession with 2D graphics that is just unparalleled in this day and age, that combines modern technology with classic 2D art styles. And needless to say, they've developed this art style that is partly titillating, but at the same time really impressive to look at because of the way that they animate and just how gorgeous the games turn out to be. They're like literal works of art. You are here because you want to find out how I ranked the five Vanillaware games that came out in the West. And before you say anything else and say like, oh, there's actually more than five because of remakes and remasters and whatnot, let's just say that the newer versions of Vanillaware games, the remaster slash remakes, actually do a lot of significant things that the old versions of these games don't do. Like really going into the gameplay and rethinking how everything is kind of connected and kind of made and how everything coalesces to the point that it kind of renders the old versions of these games kind of obsolete. My hope is that by talking about these Vanillaware games that you're going to give them a shot because really Vanillaware games are some of the best games out there that not a lot of people actually even play. So I'm hoping that this video can convince you to check them out. In any case, here we are. So let's rank the top five Vanillaware games of all time before Unicorn Overlord comes out. An interesting fact about Vanillaware is that their team is actually comprised of people who love StarCraft. And one of their biggest passions is real-time strategy and slash strategy games in general. And for the longest time, when they were trying to find their footing, they were experimenting with action and they were also experimenting with strategy. Grim Grimoire once more was their attempt to put a lot of their knowledge of playing StarCraft in an attempt to bring the real-time strategy genre onto console without just copying and pasting what worked on PC. And what you basically got is this super deep game that while it's not at the same level of depth as something like Tactics Ogre or Tactics Ogre Reborn, the way that the different elements in the game coalesced was something next level and pretty much like alienated a lot of newcomers. And the reason why Once More was actually made is to kind of lower the barrier of entry so that newcomers can actually have the confidence to play Grim Grimoire. But it's still really dang hard. And unless you play it at an easier difficulty, there's definitely going to be some challenges learning the mechanics of this game. I personally spent a ton of time just trying to learn the systems last year when it first came out. But the gorgeous signature Vanillaware art style is still there, plus the soundtrack from Base Escape, which is a group composed of Hitoshi Sakimoto, who has been their collaborator for a long time now. Personally, I love Grim Grimoire once more because it is a museum piece, even its remake, because it really shows where Vanillaware came from, and it's an acknowledgement by Vanillaware that, yes, the original release of Grim Grimoire was pretty dang difficult, but we're going to try our best to make it more palatable to people, and therefore we're going to have a crack at it once more. Maybe that's why it's called Once More. If you're curious about Grim Grimoire Once More, it's out now on Switch, PS4, and PS5. At number 4 is Dragon's Crown and Dragon's Crown Pro. Now, the reason why I'm making a distinction between the two is that Dragon's Crown, the original, was released on the Vita and the PS3, and the Pro version was actually released on the PS4. And quite honestly, there's not a lot of differences between the original release and the Pro versions in this particular manner. Now, what's also very interesting is that even though they're called differently, Pro, which was released on the PS4, is actually cross-play compatible with the PS3 and the Vita release. To this day, actually. 
Dragon's Crown was actually heavily inspired by Capcom's Dungeons & Dragons games that was released like back in the 90s in the arcades. It's only like very recently that we're able to play those games, and I think somebody at Vanillaware was like, you know what, those games are really fun, let's up the ante by actually providing some really deep RPG elements that people can really sink their teeth into. And what you basically got is this really amazing stage-based brawler that actually required you to kind of go back into the levels later a second time around to fight like tougher monsters but it's so cool because like you get to play this with your friends up to four players at the same time and you can have like a variety of different like builds and characters that is just really fun to play with a lot of people this is the game that actually like got me into co-op gaming in the modern era let's make that clear because there's actually not a lot of co-op rpgs that have the kind of depth that dragon's crown has of course this kind of slows down the speed in which you get into the next level but what's really cool about this is that it is very straightforward it is a brawler after all so a lot of it is just like well what kind of class do you want to bring into our next adventure that sort of thing and you can hot swap at any time when you go to the tavern and it's so cool because i think i literally have like 16 different characters that i'm using to play with other people and it's just so much fun to play if you love action games that you can play with your friend like this is the game for you you should definitely check it out because it's just amazing. It's got really cool graphics. Of course, it's Vanillaware. Of course, it's going to have great graphics. Great music, again, by Bass Escape. And just a fantastically good time that I think you all will enjoy. Whenever my mind reflects on Muramasa, the prevailing thought is that it truly felt like I was playing a skillful ninja that jumped right out of Japanese folklore. This is due in part to its high-speed combat which might actually look intimidating based on the footage. However, I gotta be clear and say that all of these inputs are actually done using a single button. That, in my opinion, is one of the game's greatest achievements, as it manages to make you feel like you're doing so much when, in reality, actually executing these dance-like maneuvers and battle sequences is far from overwhelming. But another thing that makes this title stand out from the other Vanillaware titles are these light Metroidvania elements. You're not going to be tasked with scrutinizing intricate maps for long periods of time in order to scour the world for obscure secrets, as most of what you'll need to find is relatively easy to procure. Vanillaware knew exactly what they were doing when making this game, and while this isn't an overly complex experience, it's straight to the point and very engaging. And given how intricate their titles tend to be, Muramasa Rebirth ends up being a breath of fresh air in their catalog. It's fun, it's fast, and it has cool ninjas. What more needs to be said? Muramasa Rebirth is only available on the Vita. When the original Odin Sphere released on the PS2 back in 2007, it was critically acclaimed for its beautiful artwork, great music, and moving story. The gameplay, however, wasn't received quite as warmly, due in large part to a strict stamina system, limited combo variety, and awkward leveling mechanics. In other words, it played stiffly, not anything like a modern action game. In order to keep this wonderful title relevant, Vanillaware decided to develop and released a remake in 2016 known as Odin Sphere Leifthrazir, which I reviewed a few years ago on the channel. I know that as of late, there have been a number of high-quality remakes, remasters, and re-releases, but believe me when I say that this is one of the few remakes that I can think of that flat-out replaces the original in every conceivable way. Nearly every facet of its original gameplay loop has been dramatically improved. Rather than simply sanding off the rough edges, combat has been completely reworked from the ground up in order to deliver blistering combat speeds, complex combos, and a more in-depth leveling system. Most importantly of all, however, is that both the fantastic story and gorgeous artwork remain relatively untouched, going as far as to reuse the same voice tracks used in the original release. It's abundantly clear that Vanillaware knew exactly what the strengths and weaknesses were of the original PS2 release, and that clarity of vision has resulted in one of the most pitch-perfect remakes that I've ever gotten a chance to play. And if you ever want to play this game, which, by the way, before I forget, has different styles of gameplay in it, 
you can play Odin Sphere Leif Thrazir on the PS3, the Vita, and the PS4. At number one is my all-time favorite Vanillaware game, which is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Yes, my review mispronounced Aegis as Aegis, but I don't care because if you watch that video, you know why this became my favorite Vanillaware game of all time, pretty much. What's really cool about 13 Sentinels is that it actually blends two different styles of gameplay together. One is a traditional point-and-click adventure game, and the other is a strategy game that is inspired by both Final Fantasy's ATB system with tower defense gameplay. Now, to call it one or the other exclusively, like, oh, calling 13 Sentinels a tower defense game or a strategy game doesn't really encompass the breadth and scope of what 13 Sentinels actually does, which is to confuse the heck out of you. This game has 13 heroes. They're all pilot these mechs called Sentinels. And your job is to basically defend this city from these massive kaiju that are essentially aliens that are trying to basically take over the world. And even though it's been years since this game's release, I'm still reluctant to actually talk about more of the story because part of the experience of playing through 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is the confusion and not knowing what's actually happening. So it makes it extremely difficult to talk about without spoiling very specific parts of it. What's also very innovative about 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is that you can choose to engage with the story exclusively or the combat exclusively as much as you want to or whenever the game tells you that you can't anymore. And I think that's kind of brilliant that they were able to split the story elements and the combat elements into two very distinct parts that you get to choose like which one you want to interact with at any given time. But as I said, you can't play through the entire game just with a story or just with a combat because they kind of lock each other out. That said, there are 13 different paths to choose from depending on whose story you want to experience. And here's the magic of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Even though there are 13 different storylines kind of happening concurrently, that confusion actually coalesces into something very cohesive and very coherent by the end of the adventure. It almost puts you in the role of an investigative reporter, where you're getting all of these different factoids and everything that's happening, like a timeline of what's happening, and you're in charge of piecing everything together and making the most sense out of everything that's actually happening in this world, which is really truly fascinating when you really think about the kind of scope that it took to write something like this. Imagine that, being able to basically experience the game in any order that you want, and experience the combat in any order that you want. It, it's really overwhelming to say the least, and it remains as one of my favorite Vanillaware games of all time, and it's because of that that it stands at number one in this list of amazing Vanillaware games. And if you want to play it, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is available on the Switch and the PS4. So there you have it. All five Vanillaware games that have been released in the West rank from top five to top one. And I'm curious how your ranking is going to be on all five of these games if you played them. If you haven't, I'm curious to see what game you're actually interested in checking out before or after Unicorn Overlord. Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.